All right, so to start the holiday armadillo stocking, you will print pages six to 11 um, of the pattern, which are the pattern pieces. You can print the whole pattern if you choose to. Um, measure the one inch square on each piece um, to make sure that it measures exactly one inch. If you print some pages, uh, some pages could be printed off. It's just better to check all. Um, and also you will need to use Adobe Reader to print the pattern. Um, so once you've measured all of the one inch squares, you'll just cut out along all the solid black or solid lines. I guess some are gray where the pattern um, is taped together. If you, if it's a pattern that you plan on using often, you might want to print it out on cardstock and it will be more durable. All right, so I'm going to cut out all of the pattern pieces and then we'll come back and tape them together. All right, once all the pieces are cut out, we are going to um, lay this so that the matching letters are butted up against each other at the lines. Nothing is overlapping. And then we'll just tape together along the line. Fold my fabric in half, wrong sides together. Line this stocking up. The fabric is folded in half. I'm not cutting anything on the fold. This way I'm just getting two mirrored cuts um, at once. So, and as usual, I just like to cut around it with my rotary cutter. So we have two pieces mirrored from the exterior. We'll repeat that with the lining. So we have exterior, we have lining. Now we need mirror cuts of the inner facing. So again, I'm folding this in half so that I can get both cuts at the same time. So the glue sides are facing each other right now. All right, now the last thing we have to do is cut out the vinyl pieces. Um, so to make these face the, the right direction, you'll want to cut them on the right side of the vinyl. Um, if you prefer to cut from the back of the vinyl, then you'll just cut with the pattern pieces face down. Um, and that's so that they, the finished pieces face the correct direction. So I'm going to do this with it face down from the back um, so that I can trace around it if this marker works. Yep. All right, I'm going to cut the straight edges with my rotary cutter. Um, so that I can get them nice and, and perfectly straight since they'll be visible on the front of the stocking. All right, and then the 
curve part, I'll just cut with my scissors. And also when you're finished cutting it out, if um, you want to use any kind of edge paint or edge coat on your vinyl cork or leather um, on the raw edges, you would want to do that now and then give it time to dry before you sew it on. But you would put it on the two straight edges um, and then on the toe you would put it on this curved edge. I typically do not use pattern pieces for large rectangles. Um, so I'm going to use my ruler. So first I'm just going to line this up and cut a nice straight edge. I will cut this to five and a quarter wide. And I think that at So Hungry Hippie, most of her vinyl comes in 18 inch rolls. Um, so that makes it nice that this is 17.5, so you can cut it on the width. So then line this up at 17.5. Well, this is a little bit longer than 18, I would say. And then we just need to cut the toe portion. This is the part that will show on the finished bag, so I'm just going to really try to make sure it's not choppy or anything and cut that nicely. Alright, and then the rest of it. So all of the pieces are cut out. Now let's go fuse the interfacing to the exterior. Okay, so we're at the ironing board. First, um, I'm heating my iron up on high with steam. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I did not pre-iron my fabric. So I'm going to do that. Um, I just sprayed it with a little bit of water to help get the creases out. It's been folded up on my shelves for a few years, actually. All right, so we want one exterior stocking piece, um, wrong side up, and then we want one fusible interfacing piece, wrong side down, so the glue side is down, and spray this with water. This is Pellon Shape Flex SF 101, um, and this is how I do that. When you spray it with water, it allows it to shrink. Um, usually the interfacing will shrink a little bit, and then I have my iron on full steam. You could also use a heat press or a steam press to make this process faster. Okay. 
right? And then after I fully fuse it from the wrong side, I flip it over and go over it one more time, still with full seam, just to make sure that all of the interfacing is fused. If you use a thicker material for the outside, um, a canvas or a flannel even, you can skip the interfacing. I would only use it for um, thin cotton fabrics. Even then, it probably isn't 100% necessary. Um, it's just a stocking. And here you can see how much the interfacing shrinks. Um, do you see the edge where it's smaller than the exterior now? I've gotten different bolts that will shrink a lot and some don't shrink much, but usually it shrinks some. So I always spray it with water first before I fuse it. So all the interfacing is fused and let's get to sewing. All right, the very first step, we have the cuff. We're gonna fold this right sides together, matching the two short edges. This vinyl is super sticky. Um, let me grab some clips. I don't even know if I'll need clips. I think it'll just stick to itself. So, let's see. There we go. Match up the two short edges. And then sew this together using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch a couple stitches at the start and stop. All right, trim my threads. Now you want to open up the seam allowance and we're going to top stitch this. So what I like to do, I have um, some double-sided tape here and I'm just going to place this along the seam and it's actually going over um, the stitching line, which will be okay. Put it on both sides first. If I had one that was a little more narrower than this, then it would not go over that line, but it won't matter. It's going to be folded inside anyway. Okay. So peel off the paper backing. On both of these. All right. I'm going to press this seam flat. All right, so just starting at one end and the tape will hold it down. So 
I'll just press that nice and flat. Let me see if sometimes I don't need a Teflon needle, other times I do, and I don't know. I don't know how the foot works on this vinyl. Let me grab a scrap. I'll test this out to see which foot I need. Yeah, definitely not this one. All right, so if you use a super shiny vinyl, you'll want to use a Teflon foot. Um, it has a coating on the bottom that allows it to glide across the any sticky surfaces. And I just Googled Teflon foot um, and then my sewing machine model and bought whatever pulled up there on Amazon. All right. So we are going to top stitch this um, at, at about a 1 8 inch seam allowance. On each side of the seam. And you just have to fold the rest of the kind of tube of the cuff out of the way. Try to stop with your needle in the down position. All right, and now we're going to come back the other side. So I'm just going to turn it around right there. work my way back up the other side. All right. So now that you have that part folded, we're going to fold the bottom raw edge to the wrong side by one half inch. So what I'm going to do is take my ruler. All right, I'm going to use my ruler and a marker and I'm going to measure one inch up from the bottom raw edge all the way around. And that way when I fold the raw edge to the back, I'll know how far to fold it. It will be up to this line. And I use my double-sided double, double -sided tape for this. And I'll just put it, you can either put it directly around the bottom edge or just beneath the line that you drew. And just go all the way around with that. Sure it's stuck down. All right, and now I'll peel that up. And then I should have not peeled the whole thing off at once. Huh? Fold the bottom raw edge up to the line you just marked. That's my easy, easier way to be exact about a one half inch. Um, or that it's just one in or half inch that's folded to the back because if I don't mark a line then I either have to measure constantly or I kind of eyeball it and I'm not very good at that. So this way you know that you're 
bottom cuff or the yeah the bottom on your cuff will be nice and even all right so I'll just make sure that's all pressed down nicely all right and then from the right side you will top stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance and then again using a three eighths inch seam allowance um, you don't have to do two lines of stitching if you don't want to it's decorative I prefer it though I think it looks nice um, I use again a longer stitch length and I'm going to start right on the side seam so that where I back stitch is not like fall on the front of the stocking or anything so I'm doing the quarter inch seam allowance first Trim those threads off. All right, and then one more line of stitching using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, which I do not have a marking on my sewing machine for 3 8 so I just choose a line. It's honestly the one that's on my 1 4 um, it's just a spot that's halfway between my quarter inch and half inch, and I call that three eighths because three eighths is halfway between a quarter and a half. So, and I always do my top stitching from the right side, um, since the right side of your stitching typically looks better. So I noticed in my last video um, just how squeaky my sewing machine foot is. So I think I need to spray something on that. And my chair. I need a new chair. My chair is awful. If you have a good chair that you like um, for sewing, and I also use it at the computer when I'm designing, so drop, drop a comment below and let me know what your chair is if you really like it because I need to buy a new one. All right, so I have two lines of stitching. Um, again, that's purely for decoration to have two lines. You don't need to do that. All right, so let's make the hanger portion real quick. All right, so with the hanger wrong side up, we're going to draw a line down the center of the wrong side. So it's just one inch in from either edge is the center. I'm going to use some of my double-sided tape each of the long raw edges into that center line. And I make sure I'm using a tape that I can sew through that won't gum up my needle. Um, this is from Wawak. I don't know how to say that. Either way, no matter how I say it, I feel like I'm saying it wrong. So, All right, fold both long raw edges into the middle, and then I'm going to use one more line of tape down either half of this um, I've also bought tape off of Amazon um, Tandy Leather has some it's just leather tape um, 
this one's probably my favorite and it's a bigger roll for cheaper so all right so that is in fourths now and we're going to top stitch that using a 1 8 inch seam allowance I have this well once once you stick the tape on this vinyl it does not come unstuck so hopefully you don't need to make an adjustment all right all the way down both um, long edges trim my threads. Oh, the wind is crazy outside. I don't know if you can hear that on the video, but it's like really super windy. Okay, so now I'm going to fold the ends of my hanger like this. So you're not just folding it, well, kind of like folding it in half and then making them flat so that it goes over like this. It's not twisted. I need one lining panel and you want it to be the one with the toe pointing to the right all right i'm going to make a mark along the edge that's one inch in from the right side on the lining and then with my hanger Let's see how I want this. All right, you wanna place your hanger with the raw edges along the top of the lining and line it up with that one inch mark. And then I'm just going to base this in place using a quarter inch seam allowance. like that. All right, so now let's sew the toe and heel in place. We want, you want the exterior panel with the toe facing to the right. All right, and I have my toe piece and my heel piece. So I'm going to, on the wrong side of this, just put a few lines of tape so that it will stay in place. Um, I think a glue stick maybe would also work for this to hold it long enough for you to sew. If you're using fabric, um, I think I will add directions how to do this with fabric instead of a non-fraying material only. Um, but you would just sew two pieces right sides together along these edges, flip it right side out, and then you could follow the rest of the directions the same way. So, peel off all of the paper. All right, and hang on, let me move this so that I can it this way so I can see better. You want to make sure that the heel is properly lined up with the curve on the stocking. All right, just press that down with the tape so that it stays and then I'm going to also put tape on the back of the toe piece. So my original stockings that I made 
with this pattern um, or like I think two Christmases ago and I used a buffalo plaid red and black buffalo plaid and um, brown leather so and I knew I wanted to make a pattern from it and that year it was too close to Christmas and I was new so there was no way I'd be able to get it out in time last year I forgot about it until it was too late so this year I finally remembered um, thought it would be fun okay so this one just line that up with the curve as well it m might be helpful to um, have your pieces figure out how they fit on before you put the tape on the back all right that looks good so now we're going to top stitch oh, it looks like my threads is about to break we're going to top stitch along um, really all of the edges I guess using an eighth inch seam allowance so since I have to use this vinyl foot I have to kind of eyeball it Teflon foot because it does not have it has a quarter inch um, wide foot leg what do you call that half of the foot and my thing is not my sewing machine's not threaded right okay Whatever. all right so I'm just going down the two straight edges using an eighth inch seam allowance when you get to the end of the first edge pivot with your needle down and continue again using an eighth inch seam allowance and then here you can use um, really a quarter of an inch around the edges as long as it's less than half an inch so that it will be inside the seam allowance stitch our toe on why does my sewing machine keep doing that my threads weird and loopy maybe I didn't thread something right with a quarter inch seam allowance. Oh, this is going to be so cute. Okay, so now we want the two exterior mains. We're going to place them right sides together matching all edges and um, clip them together And then we're going to sew these together using a half inch seam allowance um, around all of the edges except for the top. Leave the top edge open. So switch to a shorter stitch length. 
And then make sure you back stitch at the start and the stop. I'm really just going to keep this Teflon foot on for the whole video. It won't hurt anything. And then we're going to do the same thing with the two lining panels, except we're going to leave a hole along the straight back edge to turn it right sides out. So let me flip that. We'll see how well. And I may, I don't know. We'll see how this ends up. I'm not sure if I want to want, I like to put interfacing on fabric and it's weird for me not to as a bag maker but I don't really know that it's needed on the lining since it's just a stocking do we want to use a ton of interfacing on a stocking I'm not sure so I did not use interfacing on the lining um, of the last ones I made so we'll see how this one turns out and if I decide to use interfacing well, you'll know because it will be in the pattern. So I always film these videos before I actually release the pattern or anything. Um, so sometimes I find errors while I'm filming that I fix. Okay, so I just want to leave, um, how long did I say to leave the five inch long gap? So I'm just going to measure here about five inches and I will make sure I start and stop sewing at those points. And that way I leave um, a hole to turn this right side out when it's finished and then we'll just top stitch it closed. All right, so start sewing at the top. If you have a heavier sewing machine than I do, um, and it doesn't like sewing just two, la two layers of fabric with no interfacing, then you may want to interface your lining for sure. Backstitch when you get to the first mark, and then jump over to the second one and start sewing again here. And make sure you backstitch again, since you'll be turning everything right side out through that hole. It will uh, strain the stitches there. You definitely want to backstitch. Now we're going to trim down the seam allowance on the lining and exterior to about a quarter of an inch, except for along that the opening to turn it. We'll leave this seam allowance there um, because we'll need it when we sew it closed.
I'll trim this one while I'm putting the lining as well. Or, I'm sorry, the exterior. I'm cutting it even a little bit closer than a quarter of an inch around the toe and the heel. Um, since there will be that extra vinyl or leather or cork in there as well. to turn the exterior main right side out. And then we want to take the cuff and also turn it right side out. Um, if your vinyl gets crinkled up while you're sewing, you can um, hit it with a hot blow dryer and it will get a lot of the crinkles out. So I'm going to slip the stocking, the exterior inside of the cuff, matching up the side seam on the cuff to the side seam on the stocking and I'm going to pin in place there first and then go all the way around the stocking seems to fit pretty well that's good You know, I always like to have my clips facing the right direction for what I'm going to sew. So really, I want to face them inside because I'll be sewing from the inside. Alright, so and I'm just basting this using a quarter inch seam allowance. Oh, not a half inch. Let's base it in place now. Take our lining, which is inside out, and our exterior, which is right side out, and we're going to shove the whole exterior down inside the lining. Make sure that um, everything's facing the same direction. Toes pointing to the right. We're going to also shove the cuff down inside of the lining. Alright, 
everything down in here doesn't have to be shoved in there perfectly. Um, we just want to make sure that we line up the top right. So you want to line up the um, side seam of the cuff and the exterior with the lining side seam. And then just kind of work your way around the rest of the top opening and pin the lining and exterior and cuff all together. We're going, we're going to sew it from inside, so I'm going to make sure that my clips are facing that direction. Um, the seam on your lining, the front seam on your lining and exterior should match up. that's all pinned and now we're going to sew that together using a half inch seam allowance. Just kind of adjust it as you go around and just always make sure to stop with your um, needle in the down position when you adjust so that you don't move everything. Make sure that your hanger is down in there nicely between the layers and nothing's, um, I don't know, wrinkled up. And then I'm actually going to um, backstitch over the hanger portion. So that it has some added holding power. Maybe Santa puts a lot of uh, stuff in the stockings. You don't want it to rip the hanger off. Nothing wrong with a generous Santa, right? And then when you get back to where you started, just backstitch a few times, trim the threads. Okay, and we are not trimming the seam allowance. So now you're going to turn everything right side out through the hole that we left in the lining. So I'm just grabbing from inside, I'm grabbing the bottom of the um, exterior portion of the stocking so that I can poke it that and the vinyl portion out through the hole first and then I'm reaching inside and grabbing the cuff all right now I'm going to tuck the lining well I'm going to turn the lining right side out first And then I'm going to tuck it down inside of the exterior. I'm going to go press the stocking, um, being careful not to touch any of the vinyl. You know, I can actually probably. I'm going to I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that so what we're gonna do right now is top stitch I'm just making sure that the whole the lining and exterior are both pulled all the way away from the um, vinyl cuff from use my longer stitch length and then from the lining side 
I'm going to stick the foot down inside the stocking and I'm just going to top stitch using an eighth or a quarter of an inch seam allowance here, it doesn't matter, um, to top stitch all the way around the between the lining and the exterior, so beneath the top of the cuff. Got some loose strings. Just pull them out. And I'm actually using a quarter inch seam allowance here just because of this foot that I have on. Be careful not to touch your vinyl so that you don't melt it. Um, something that would be really super cute. My friend Amy from Off With Their Threads offwiththeirthreads.com is her website. Um, she does embroidery designs. So if you have an embroidery machine, she is either just released or is currently working on um, alphabet ornament files, designs, whatever. So she has each letter of the alphabet and that could be a fun idea to embroider a um, letter onto matching vinyl and hang it from the stocking for each person so that each family member has uh, ornament with their initial hanging from their stocking as well. Alright, so once you top stitch all the way around, trim all the threads down. I'm going to um, we'll just let's just do it. All right, let's fold the cuff down actually first. cuff folded inside. So it's like this. Cuff is folded inside a little bit. Um, I'll hit that with a hot blow dryer to get the wrinkles out. And then just pull the lining up out of the exterior and find your turning hole. Let me make sure that I don't have anything in the way. Okay, so then you're just going to um, fold the raw edges at the turning hole inside by about half of an inch and clip or pin that close. Who doesn't love a fun project? Like all these custom fabric groups, how cute would it be to, you know, use some of those custom fabrics to make stockings for your family? which I think I want to try that next, some custom zombie stocking. All right. So then just bring that over to your sewing machine and edge stitch just as close to the edge as you can get. Just trimming the threads. Oh. 
push the lining back down inside all the way and you're finished so really that's it you could skip the toe and the heel portion and you'd have an even faster project um, so I'll just press that well and it's done and I'll hit the top portion with a hot blow dryer to get the wrinkles out so how cute I love this this again this uh, is a mirror vinyl I don't know if she currently has this one but I get my vinyl from so hungry hippie um, I will link her shop in the comments and her Facebook group um, but she has always tons of different vinyls um, and I love this mirror vinyl it's really fun this fabric was from Joanne Fabrics uh, a few years back so have fun with the pattern I can't wait to see the stockings that you make